Lynn Bowen has always suffered with depression. Her daughter, Angela Rayner, describes it like being in a black hole. Just nothing. It's just pain, nothing. Like, she can't move. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to be here. She doesn't want to live. It's just real deep, deep sorrow. They didn't know then that the sorrow was caused by bipolar disorder, an illness that causes extreme mood swings with manic highs and crippling lows. For me, it wasn't a title or a condition. It was more, why is my mum different? My friends, their mums were able to do these things for them. What were those things? A mum that would get up in the morning, would have their clothes ready for them for school, that would make their breakfast. Bipolar typically emerges in the late teens, but Lynn wasn't diagnosed till her mid-30s, and that is not unusual. According to the charity Bipolar UK, more than one million people are living with this illness. But shockingly, it takes nine and a half years on average to get a diagnosis. The Royal College of Psychiatrists are now saying that delay must be cut in half, warning of a lost decade in which people can lose jobs, relationships, homes and lives. I'm not saying that he was getting married. The impact of this illness is something I understand well, because my brother had bipolar disorder. He was a brilliant musician and artist, but sadly, he'll never know my children, because we lost him at 37, for reasons linked to this mental illness. Like for Bowen, there was a long delay in diagnosis. If my brother had had a diagnosis 10 years earlier, I think he'd probably be alive. If your mother had a diagnosis 10 years earlier, do you think it would have changed your childhood? My mum has spent weeks in hospital where she didn't have to be in hospital and I think if she'd have got the intervention early on and the support early on, she wouldn't have ended up in that crisis point. Deal with them as a medical problem. Take the case of Judy, a 42-year-old woman who is also a diagnosed schizophrenic who believes her thoughts are controlled by a computer. She lives day and night on the streets of New York City. A woman from the Midwest who at one time had a bright future. This is where her illness has brought her. Her mother, who prefers not to be identified, knows about her daughter's life on the street. She'll be walking down the street and she'll talk to herself. And she screams practically all night long. And it's quite heartrending. There is no cure for schizophrenia but it can be treated with drugs to control hallucinations and delusions. And some doctors believe that a combination of drugs and talk therapy can help schizophrenics deal with their illness. But far too many people are getting nothing, like Judy. Her mother told us how it all began. She and I were driving in a car one time, and she said, you know, Mother, she says, I think someday I'm going to have to be hospitalized. But she never did get into the hospital. As Judy became more and more irrational, she became less willing to go in for treatment. And it all came down to getting her committed into a psychiatric hospital. But the problem is that in most states, you can't get someone committed unless it can be proved that he or she is extremely dangerous to self or others. Judy was not violent, so a legal aid attorney claimed that she could not be hospitalized against her will. Her mother remembers that day in court. She was free and she walked out, and she didn't even know where she was going to go. And, and what's more, I walked out into the hall, and I said to this lawyer, I said, now what's going to happen to Judy? And she said, that's not my problem. And the problem was that there wasn't any place else for Judy to go. There are over 7 million mentally ill and emotionally disturbed children in America. This program is about some of those children and the institutions they live in. Children of Darkness, next on non-fiction television. I'm playing Dragon Sins with a band by his mother. He's never, never seen her. Father's very much involved, very loving. He's coming very up soon, eh? What his future will be. Brian! All right, Brian. I look forward to every Sunday for Brian. 
That's my day. Sunday is my day. Sunday's the day Jim McAnally and his son have spent together for the past four years. It's the day Brian gets to go home. Most Sundays, Linda Nixon comes along too. She grew up next door to Brian, and he likes to think of her as his girlfriend. Mr. McAnally lost his leg in an automobile accident when he was 19. Now he's 70 years old and has had two serious strokes. When Brian's illness became too much for him to handle, Jim had to give him up to the hospital. But for the first 14 years of Brian's life, Jim raised him in this house in East Philadelphia. During the Depression, Jim earned a living selling bananas, oranges, and strawberries from a horse-drawn wagon. On the streets of Philadelphia, they called him the Huckster. Brian, right, sit down a minute. <laughs> All right, come on. I'm going to do the Huckster for you. Okay. All sound, solid tomatoes, new white potatoes, hard heads, lettuce, fresh cabbage, string beans, bananas, three pounds per quarter. Be right there, lady. Yeah. <laughs> remember Fritz ate your leg off? Yeah, I remember that too. Sure, Fritz. So how Fritz ate your leg off? Yeah, I was laying on the couch taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen to Brian when I die? I don't know what's going to happen. But who's going to go take Brian out on Sunday? Or a Saturday. Who's going to bring him home for the holidays and show him the love and care that I show him? Maybe that's one of the reasons I shower him with affection now. To try to give him everything that I possibly can now, knowing that when I'm gone, he won't get it. Yet, Brian is uh, taken care of financially. He won't want. But he will want love and affection. He will want love and affection. Where is he going to get it? Where is he going to get it? It's like a parade. There's nothing wrong with Brian in my eyes. Hi, Grandpa. Nothing at all. He's just a normal person to me. See, other people think he's, you know, there's something wrong with him. But in my eyes, there's nothing wrong with Brian. <laughs> Those are going to count the two. Too many people tease Brian. Too many people do. But I don't like it. So I stick up for him. What can I do? Because I think a lot of Brian. A lot. I really do. I think a lot of Brian. A peaceful and happy life for Brian. That's all I can ask for. But God will see fit to take care of him. To watch over him. And uh, uh, that he doesn't have any heartaches more than he has now. One day, if he's lucky, Brian may go to a group home for the mentally ill. But there are just five in all of Pennsylvania, with just 45 young people living in them. So it's more likely that when Brian's too old for Eastern, he'll be sent to an adult institution. The hardest part of my day is Sunday when I take him back to school. Knowing that I'm going home to an empty house when Brian should be with me. When Brian should be with me. And I have everything in Brian's room as if he's with me every day. When I go past that bed, I can picture Brian and when I'm going to bed at night, I can picture Brian and it hurts. It hurts. That's what I pray for. You know where you're at now, Brian? Brian? What? You know where you're at now? School. That's right. Are you going to be good for Dad? Yeah. That's right. All right, let's go. Brian, come on. Kiss Linda. God love you. And, uh, please shake hands with Dad. Okay. I love you, Dad. I love you, too, honey. I love you a lot. Okay. Good night. All right, I'll wait. I'm going to walk my virginity.
hai thằng Say, just bring him back here No, no, I won't see him till next week There's no Brian In the bed upstairs I can't tell you anymore Six foot one, who's who's come to the conclusion that he's going to do whatever he wants to do. When I brought Mike here today, I, I just cried, and I knew, and, and the people in school knew that he was coming up here to stay. You know that if he doesn't change, he's going to get arrested. You know that sooner or later he's going to steal something to get money. The phone rings at ten o'clock at night, three o'clock in the morning. You're shaking. You're wondering. What's this call going to mean? Is it the police? And that's the fear that we live in. We're ready to, to uh, crack. It's just an example. Ready to crack. I love him so much. I wouldn't want to lose him. I can't tell you. I can't want to lose that camera because I cry all the time. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. Day in, day out, yeah. life at Elan is constant yeah. confrontation. Yeah. Brian suffers from mania and schizophrenia. He's been this way since he was four years old. I made this video for all the people who think we in this community are making fun of the mentally impaired. If you didn't see that, the guy with schizophrenia and mania punched the curly haired boy, blonde boy in the face, and the curly haired blonde boy is holding him. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve to have to live like this. And I think back then they didn't want to put, I don't know, if they didn't want to put kids on drugs, I know that's still frowned upon. So they just put them in group homes instead of giving them medication. This was the 80s. Or somewhere around there. This is what actual mental illness and actual disability looks like. This is, these are people who can't help it. These are people who are being criminalized for simply be, not being born well. The Goblin is not one of these people. Am I saying he's all there? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, just as an observer, no. These people, it amazes me who we defend in this society, and it's never these types of people. Because you wouldn't look good helping or defending these types of people. It's virtue signaling to me. That's why I don't care when people come to my channel and say the garbage that they do.
I feel the same way about people who want to talk about SA and child abuse and they pick and choose who they want to defend. They pick and choose which cases are the most important and it's the cases that make them look good. They're not really upset with the victimization of women or the victimization of children. Why? Because they'd be angry no matter who the victimizer was. They just be, they would be just as angry no matter who it was. This is the ugly mental illness that they don't want to show people. It doesn't look good. It's not pretty. That's why people don't show it. I'll play a little bit more. Brian lives here at Eastern State School and Hospital in Trevos, Pennsylvania. 160 children live with him. They're psychotic, schizophrenic. They suffer from organic brain damage and autism. Some are hyperactive, some totally withdrawn. Some are suicidal. I was trying to kill myself so I could be with my mother. That may be hard to understand, but I feel as though once you're dead, you'll be able to be with the other people that are also dead. I love her a lot. And I don't even know her, and that's what's so funny. Like, because I was so young when she died, I don't even know what she looks like or anything. But I just wish she was alive. I have an identity problem. My mom died, my father took off on me, and it hurts. It hurts a lot. When you started cutting at yourself, what was going on inside your head? I just wanted to die to be with my mom. I didn't care no more. I didn't care about nobody no more. Are you going to stay alive or are you going to die? That's a tough question to answer because I don't know. Sometimes I feel like killing myself. But other times I'm happy and I want to live forever. Jerry's parents are alive. But because of his muscular dystrophy and emotional problems, they didn't want him. My parents were ashamed to go out because of me. They were ashamed to take me out, you know. It's like, it's like I was a black sheep of the family. It's like tomorrow's his two-year anniversary, and his parents just more or less dropped him off here and said, you got him, see you later, and took off. When my mom brought me here, I seen her, and I, I ain't seen her since that day. Since that day she brought me in here, I have not seen her. And three days after, they took off from Las Vegas and just left him, left me here. And I didn't know for six months, because I was trying to call him at home, and I got somebody else moved into our house. And six months later, they wrote me a letter saying they were out in Las Vegas. And they enclosed it with a check for $20. I guess it's about time that I say something to the fact that they don't want me no more and they never will and that it's time for me to get out of here and make a life for myself, which I plan to do when I leave. Can you do it? Yes, I think I can. I think I can. Many of the children at Eastern are chronically mentally ill. They'll never see what we see, hear what we hear, think in ways we do. How much loot you got in there, son? Brian McAnally has lived at the hospital for the last four years. Oh, it's me. I want to go swim, that's what I want. Oh, wait. Of yeah! Praise the Lord, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Bodies, right? thank, you, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to lay down, please. Lord. Brian, come on. I want you to lay down, okay? Don't get me sweat. I'm not going to get you sweaty. I just want you to lay down. Lay down, Mark, because I think you need to relax. Okay. You're a little bit upset, okay? Okay. All right, I'll be outside the door if you need me, okay? The dentist's office. It's a dentist's office. Uh, hi, doctor. <laughs> Do you know what's going on with him? What's the matter with him? You know what's going on? Not really. It's... 
Brian is. It's kind of scary. It's fun. The um, heart is falling down. Brian's a very psychotic young man, and Mark, so like I said, he was doing really, really well until about a month or so ago, and he started been, just regressing, been. going completely the opposite way. He's just like he's coming on glued, and he's hallucinating a lot more. Uh, and really, he has no sense of what reality really is. Uh, the other night, he was in his room crying, and I knocked on his door to open up. Said, "Brian, what are you crying about?" He's like, "I hit the head." I said, "You got hit the head." Head. head. I got hit in the head. He said, "I was looking out the window, and the sun hit me in the head." He was like really upset all night about you know looking out the window, getting hit in the head with the sun. He's having a really rough time. Tomorrow night we have a van ride. All right. And if, if you're good, if you feel better, then we'll take you out on the van ride. Anyway. If I could adopt them all, I would. I know they're like <laughs> probably 40 or 50 by now, but if they're still living. But I still would. The goblin deserves to be here. The goblin deserves to be there. A lot of other people deserve to be there, but not these people. I didn't see anything funny. I didn't see anything humorous. It's sad. Anyway, I'll see you all later, and I hope you enjoy the video. Quote, enjoy. One thing, like people talk about depression all the time. The difference between depression and sadness is sadness is just, you know, from happenstance, whatever happened or didn't happen for you. And depression is your body saying, fuck you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this, this avatar that you've created in the world is too much for me. So a friend of mine who's a spiritual teacher has a really good take. His name is Jeff Foster. And his take on it is that uh, they should change, you know, you should think of the word as, de of de as uh, sorry, of depressed as deep rest. Deep rest. Your body needs to be depressed. It needs deep rest from the character that you've been trying to play. What's up, YouTube? Um... I know I said I wasn't going to be back for about a year, but I talked to my therapist this morning because um, I have been seeing a therapist, especially after everything I've been through. And they do know about everything that's going on. And, and they said that um, using my outlet to release my anger would be a very good thing to kind of help the healing process and to help me getting back to where I want to be. Um, so from here on, not every day, but once in a while, uh, for the next several months, you guys will be hearing me doing a lot of very, very heavy covers of certain songs as a lot of the heavier songs that I've listened to have helped me get through a lot of what I've been through, so, yeah. Now, again, don't expect to cover every day. It's only going to be a once-in-a-while thing. Um, for now, I, it's literally just me getting my anger out, but I do hope that you guys still enjoy the covers I'm going to be doing for you guys. Peace. Imagine that because you don't have a mate and you don't have any friends and you don't have a job and you don't do anything productive with your time, etc., that you're kind of a loser. And what does that mean? It means compared to other people, you're not doing very well. Hypercompetent people have their lives together on all those fronts and they're thriving in all those domains. And you are at the bottom of the hierarchy where everything has fallen apart and you're barely clinging to the edge of the world. There's a mechanism that sets your perceived security and utility, a marker for that.
the lower you are in the hierarchy, which is the more unstable your life is, the less serotonin your brain produces, and that makes you hypersensitive to negative emotion and suppresses positive emotion. And so true depression, which isn't having a terrible life, true depression would be a mismatch between your actual competence and your self-perceived competence. So from what I understand, uh, uh, and I know how things work on here, is uh, Cyrax uh, is trying to cancel a fundraising stream with his and his ass. Um, but two things. One, Rumble doesn't care, and I've already raised the money. Um, so... Uh, I don't know if he wants to try some more. Uh, I'll give it another 10 minutes if he wants to uh, do his little shenanigans. Um, that's fine. He, 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 he's more than entitled. He's got another 10 minutes to do it to get me shut down. Um, but yeah, so he's not going... Like, the update is he's back with Taylor. Okay. Uh, another update is I am getting a racing rig because I filed a claim for abandoned freight. And, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, he's not going to be dealing with the trolls anymore. Um, so, uh, I've got like 10 minutes. I told you it wasn't going to be a very long one. Thank you to Kevin. Um, thank you to Munchy Cruncher, I believe. Well, yeah, uh, Crunchy Muncher. I think it's Munchy Cruncher. Um, 
Thank you, boys, very much. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so Munch wants me to play some songs. All right, I'll do that, and then I'm getting out of here. All right, let's see. Create a music video better than Tommy's song. Yeah, Tommy's songs are the worst. By default, I guarantee that they will be. Hello? Hello? What kind of funky stuff do you have planned? It's Rumble, dude. Nobody cares. What are you doing? I hear you fumbling around over there. What's, what's the deal, dude? Guess he couldn't quite figure it out. That's a shame. Okay. So we'll do this, because it, uh, it'll fill up the remaining 10 minutes. What? Hey, watch your mouth. Don't people don't like you. Hey, you're not getting that ready. Morning, you're not getting that ready. Jerk off as long as you want to. Marty's a white white boy. Ginger off. Jack, it's one of the. Show that dog butt, and let's get out of here. Okay. What back? Why that? Boy. Okay. You ain't getting that rip, boy. You ain't getting it. Fuck you. You ain't getting it. I, 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 I know what you're trying to do, you're Marty. I know what you're trying to do, Marty. You're you're trying to get that rip, you're Marty. That's not gonna happen, bigger boy, Marty. Yeah. Shut up, boy, Marty. I'm, I'm your master. Boy. You're my slave. I am your slave owner. Now get back to going back into the time fields where I have to get the whip on your ass and beat your ass again for the hundredth time. Go on, slave boy. Go back in the cotton fields where you belong. Go on. Go on. Go on. Get back in the cotton fields. All right, I'm going right now. Oh, what's the matter, Marty? Hey, hey, go on. Go on. Get back in the cotton fields. Go on. Cut the video. Go back in the cotton fields. Hey, Molly, go back to them cotton fields. Go to them cotton fields. Go on, Molly, go back to them cotton fields, boy. Go on, Molly, go back to them cotton fields, boy. Go back to them cotton fields, boy. Go back to them cotton fields, boy. Hey, Molly, go back to them cotton fields, boy. Go back to them cotton fields, boy. Hey, Molly, go back to them cotton fields, boy. What you doing out there, kind of bitches watching that there YouTube, boy? Huh? What you doing watching that there YouTube? Shouldn't you be in the middle of digging cotton right now? Go on, white ass.